So I've got a really good message and consideration. Sometimes it's really hard to make these videos. I don't know what to talk about. There are so many different topics that I feel it's important to talk about, and I'm not going to stop doing it. I'm going to keep doing it, and I'm going to get better, and it's going to be the way it is. Like I said, I didn't want to initially do this, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you would be amazed how fucking helpful it is. You know, number one, you have to look at yourself in the face and bring the message. That's fucking helpful to me. It really is. And I may not always have. The best message at the time. But my better messages get better and better. And they help me. They help me to put them out there. Now, what I wanted to talk about, because I think this is very important. And it regards to, like, the truth. Because of what ha had happened today. Now, I was told to do something, you know, to try to relay a connection to my son. And I'd found out some stuff. And all the things relate to any time that I, I'd been told something. And that how that was important and how that was actually all tied in to like a pre-incarnation plan. If there was just one part of that plan, if that, and I, I don't know what other agreements could be, but... I've been talking about it lately because it really was something I saw. I've never been taken before up and saw something like this. And I, I cried out because it really, it really bothered me. And I think because it was a pre-incarnated agreement, me being here for my dad at this time, when I was here, you know, and I got to do, I got to bury him. Be with him when he died. That was all part of a script. Now, I went through it. I can say that going through it, experiencing it, getting the information that that was supposed to be a life a life thing. Like, it, that, that was one of the things in my life that I was supposed to do, which I, I'm sure there are more. That's not, I'm, that's, that's where I want to start. Because I don't, I don't feel like the life script is always bad. I think there are agreements that can be made that aren't so good. But I think in the context of you're going to have a, an incarnation on the earth. You need certain things to happen. Certain experiences so that when you come out of your body... Or you're, you're, you finish your life, however it ends, that certain things have happened, that there's a reason for that. That wherever you are, whatever we are, in truth, minus the body, not in the earth condition, not forgetting our lives, in that other state of being that I just don't think we're allowed to be in while being on earth. And number one, I think it's because simply... We can't remember, and we're going through it like it's all new. You know, that really does change the dynamic of what this place is. It really does. It does. And that this is such a strong of an experience to me. And I remember when I had put my dad's ashes out there, and I didn't get to do it when I wanted to. I didn't get to do it until... Um, just one day on a whim. And I remember what I was thinking because I was like, there was something antagonizing me. And I was joking with myself, you know, saying the devil's trying to kill me. You know, not very, not 100% serious, but I kept getting a sense of something prodding at me a diff different for different reasons. And then I said, you know what, and let's go and do it. I've never felt a more perfect, 
serene thing. It was bittersweet, you know, because it was sad. It's hard to talk about because it makes you be, you know, it makes me want to cry. But try to try to shake it off. In that in that moment, it was so peaceful, and it never I've never felt more like. I was doing the thing I was supposed to do in my life. It was such a profound feeling. I've never had a feeling like that. It was so fucking strong. And it was weird because it was not. It wasn't sadness. It wasn't joy. It was something more. It just felt right. And that fuck that struck me because I'm like, why? Why does that feel this? Why is this like this? What the fuck? I'd imagined how it would be. And then when I was there, that's it's I was exactly where I was when I imagined it. There was so many different things going on it was profound and then on my purple star i painted on the rocks was a dragonfly with fucked up wings and i brought him up home with us and he probably lived for lived with me for about a week in a this um oh what was it some flower the neighbor lady got it to we got it for us. I had it inside for a while and tried to plant it outside, but I think it died. Uh, but he lived in that. It looked like he was trying to repair his wings. He had a ripple in his wing, and, it, and then it moved across the wing. So I don't know if he was stretching it and trying to do something, but he couldn't fly. And uh, I got permission from him to bring him. So I went down there with my, my dad's body. I came back with this dragonfly. Then it kind of reminded me of my dad in a way because I always called him a dragon. He was born in the year of the dragon and shit. You don't want to get too emotional. But you can't be afraid of your emotions. You can't hold them back. That's one of the things we do. And men, men do it more than anybody else. I don't totally feel comfortable crying like that. But it's but it's so it's all right. That's that's the feeling that you get. It's so fucking strong. I've gotten so much better at dealing with those emotions than I was when I was young or younger. And I think this is one of our societal problems. Now, because of this, this is where I want to go. So I'm talking I'm talking to my son and, and I'm telling him. I almost stopped talking to him because something wasn't fucking right. He wasn't acting right. He wasn't communicating at all. I still don't even have a picture of him. And I'm like, this isn't right, dude. And I found something out. And I clear. I tried to clear it up. Now, I can't say it's going to change his perspective overnight. I don't. I don't think it would be able to. Just something somebody tells you. But see, it's something somebody told him that wasn't right. And I knew it. I felt it. And with him, he's I really feel like he's he's destined because he does have the right heart. And he was defending his mom. And I'm like, I'm proud of you for taking that position. In from what you thought, I was like, "You're you did good. You did the right thing. You're doing the right thing. You've not done anything wrong." But your information wasn't right. Your information wasn't right, and I can't feel that if I'm supposed to have been in that period of time, which took me away from my children, my sons. This feels like the first time that that destiny. You know, because you're supposed to do stuff. 
it finally connects with the period of time outside of it to the future. And I knew the key was him because I know he's got the right heart. And I know that's more important for his generation and his age. I, well, I think it's important for everyone. I can't downplay it at all. Say it's not. I can't say it's not. But I asked him. I'm like, that voice that gives me the guidance and tells me these things that had wanted me to talk to you before this eclipse happens or what, for whatever reason that was pushing me that I needed, I needed to communicate to him. And he wanted me to tell him that grandpa story because that's the one where, you know, I was going to, whatever, <laughs> I was going to electrocute his grandpa because he was a molester and uh, did all this shit to my ex. It was very early in our relationship too. Very early. So it wasn't like, it stopped me. And I thought, well, if her new husband is some sort of believer, he should be able to ask him about that. And what would another believer say regarding a believer's testimony like that? I don't, I wouldn't tell someone that's probably not right. I don't have any will to, to bring any problems in their life, but I really want my ex to get help. She's doing, she's taking the fake road. A lot of people in this world, for whatever reason, and it's usually their upbringing, they don't give a fuck if they lie. They don't give a fuck if they cheat. They don't give a fuck if they steal. Because there's not a reason not to do it if they can get away with it. They don't have the proper understanding of the spiritual world and right and wrong. And a lot of times it's your parents that do that to you. You know? I do believe that, that this person has tucked it in, became the new person that they are, because this is their MO, this is what they've done, and they have multiple personalities too, of course. And as soon as she switches personalities, it's the, the it's not the one that is the married to me to you. I've experienced this, it was kind of fucked up. So I really feel like there can be some sort of healing of that in her life. And I'm not sure why she would be like that in her youth and just suddenly be fine. I don't think so. I think you can put your shit together for, for the show, for the world, if you can change your circumstances. I think a lot of people do that. But I don't think she's spiritually okay if she has. And I want her to be okay. I do. And if I'm not the if I'm not the person with her and it's still on the path to help that person get okay, whatever they need, I think it's important. It may not be any of my business. But in a way, I really feel like it kind of is because I do feel like that person's my soulmate. The person said it. I don't know how they can reconcile that other than those same problems that she was raised and they abused them and they didn't put the same values into them that I got. Now, although I was raised with the values, I didn't immediately put them into employ employ them because I have I had to grow up. We all have to grow up. You might know right and wrong, and you may not always be able to perform it in the time of trouble or what have you.
I had a job where the boss's brother worked with us and he had the gas card and he was filling up everybody's gas tanks for like pennies on the dollar. Everybody got their gas. I got my gas. And then he got, he got, he got caught. Every single person in that company got called into the office and lied to that man. And when I went in there, that, that same voice told me, do not lie to this man. And I was the only one that told the truth and got fired. And that was a real fucking difficult situation for me. I almost forgot about it. But I've never been able to disobey the voice. It always has told me the right thing. Always. I've been listening to these stories about these people that are schizophrenic and they have these voices that are telling them fucked up shit. I've never had anything like that happen to me. But I've had a voice that's guided me. I remember thinking that voice was Isis for some reason. The goddess. And I have no idea why. There's no reason to think that. It was it was a female's voice though. And I don't know. I don't know what even to think about it. I've never told anyone that. In my life. There's my buddy. So. I think it's important. I really do. To try to work with these people. That have these problems. And I really feel. Like a connection coming out. From that point in time and space. And where I'm at now. Connecting with him like a ray of light. And I think he's going to connect it with her. And I was guided to not go anymore into our shit, me and his mom, because then I, I don't want to be talking about her. I don't want to badmouth her. That's not the right thing to do. But there was, I mean, there's there was things in time that, you know, I still have that little bit of feeling of wanting to justify myself. You know, because he kept telling me, you know, forgiving me. And then when he first talked to me, he asked me, was I okay? They're asking me this because they thought something happened that didn't happen. Like, I literally went on the stand and had them tell a story that they fabricated. And I'm almost certain they helped her come up with that version of the story because it wasn't true at all. It wasn't. And that voice, that voice is what got me to go onto the stand because, because it told me that I needed to tell my story or I was going to be in real trouble. My lawyer told me not to do it. But I didn't disobey the voice. It told me the right thing to do and I did it and I won. And I wasn't guilty of what they were trying to say that I did. And they did lie. And I know that that lie... And that lying affects your consciousness. Because when you lie, you've got to cover it up. You've got to come up with all these supporting things. And what do you think your brain's doing when it does that? Do you think that's healthy? Think about it. All that brain power could be conserved if you would just tell the truth. You don't have to fabricate shit. You don't have to cover up shit. You don't have to come up with something else. That thought you had to do, all that work. All that work to lie. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. And I now, and now that I see that as an aspect of the truth, it makes so much more sense. And I didn't have that until just recently. I never thought about that before. I have a lot of deep thoughts. You know, I'm not really a superficial thinker. The things I think about, I think about deeply and I think, think about for long periods of time. And sometimes I discuss them, sometimes I don't. But something I heard made me start thinking about that. And I'm like, you know what, that's true. And that allows for a little more compassion for people that... We need that compassion. We need it because there are so many times... That people do us wrong. 
and hurt us by flat out lying or, you know, deceiving, stealing, doing something like that, that we want, we want to, it makes you angry when somebody does that to you. And it's very hard when you're angry and rightly so that it's not easy to, uh, recognize that they have a problem that maybe needs help. And I, I see that now. I've lived it. I understand. And I don't think everyone has those tools until you have certain understandings. So I think it's very important. So I just wanted to say that because uh, it is opening a pathway and I really feel right about it. And that's the whole point of doing this. You know, I've helped a lot of people. I I have a real good part in me. I have a dark side too, you know, but it doesn't stop me from connecting with those people that when I can give them the right advice or I can help them. And I don't know, it doesn't come from me. It comes from that. It comes from the same source as that voice. Because it's always available to help someone else. And that's so fucking amazing. I never realized that until recently. I was like, that's flowing through you. You're not, I don't have it for me. Because in my life, I have to make my choices and decide things for myself. But in my life, when I have access to something like that, that's for someone else. It's because they didn't have it. That's so profound. And such an amazing thing. And it, it's a it's a compassionate heart thing too. It's not this is not one of these powers and weird things. This is some real shit where it really affects us where we're fucked up. It helps heal you. So try to help heal people if you can. And god damn it, ask that ask that voice inside of you to stake, to communicate to you and to speak. Because it will, it does. And it, there is a good, there is a good thing guiding us. I don't know what it is. But I know that it loves us and it cares what the fuck's going on. That's a fact. 